Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is remembered today for his pivotal role in the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. As we celebrate his legacy, here are a few things you may not know about him. He graduated from high school at the age of 15. By the time he was 26, he had earned a Ph.D. He became the leader of the Montgomery Bus Boycott and quickly rose to prominence in the Civil Rights Movement. At age 35, Dr. King became the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner. Today, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is remembered as a champion of peace and justice who helped to shape American history and advance human rights around the world. His wisdom and courage remain a source of inspiration for generations to come. Let us honor his legacy by striving to create a world where all people can live in dignity and peace. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Any advice for a diaspora looking to establish a business in Ghana? Well, the first thing I would say is do something. Stop sitting on your butt thinking about what you're going to do, what you wish you were going to do. Uh, look, man, look. Now, if you want to come here to Ghana, first thing I'm going to tell you is this. Don't come here thinking success here is some shortcut that you couldn't do in America. That's probably the biggest disrespect you can give to a Ghana or Africa to think that you can somehow come here and find a shortcut to success. No. Success here requires the same dedication, the same commitment, the same work ethic as you would do in America. So that's the first thing is get that out of your mind. The difference is the opportunity that is afforded to you would be greater. But do not think that what it takes to be successful here is any different than what it would take to be in America. So don't come in here and create any shortcuts. It's not going to work for yourself. Black Economic Network channel. This video is a celebration of Black History Month with new Black history makers. And the first person you see is President Obama. I should just say that these people are just a sample of the new history makers and I will have an, at least one more episode with, with other leaders. Uh, president Obama, the first black president of the United States of America, and he served a full eight, uh, um, eight, eight years from 2008 to 2016 as the maximum allowed by the United States uh, Constitution. The second person is uh, Brother Akon, and he's a well-known entertainer in the USA, but more importantly, he's into the business side, one of the few African Americans who are involved with the business side of of entertainment he is involved with it also is a major player in encouraging in investing his millions in Africa and to help the African continent uh, his country where well where his parents are from uh, Senegal 
um, he's involved in a major program uh, in various countries in Africa most noted is he has a rural electrification program that is helping millions of Africans and he's also encouraging diasporans to return to Africa in fact he, he he's saying and as you will see in one of these slides he's saying that if African Americans return to Africa that will make uh, Africa into a superpower and he's pretty much encouraging all African Americans and people from the diaspora to return I have to say with all due respect to the brother that is one of the things I strongly disagree with. I don't agree with uh, repatriation or mass immigration back to Africa. I agree, of course, with reparations and um, Africans and uh, Africans outside of Africa, including myself, going to Africa to uh, visit Africa, invest in Africa, uh, have a second home in Africa, have a business in Africa, totally agree with that, but not to return uh, mass to Africa. The other races that own business in Africa, uh, they, they live uh, elsewhere, uh, both the colonial masters and the new Chinese colonial masters. They don't live in Africa. They have investment and have business in Africa, and we need to uh, totally agree we need to invest in Africa to make Africa great so it can defend uh, the Africans and diasporans also just like the USA is able to uh, defend its people all its cit citizens all over the world I love to be British Queen, I am Victoria, you see. Now where's my British butler with my British cup of tea? Tea is not from Britain, ma'am, from India it was brought. Yes, for your papa thousands died and many wars were fought. British things, my British things, it seems that tea is not. British things, my British things. Can I sweeten it? A jot? Do tell me sugar's British though. No, it's Caribbean imported. For sugar in your cup of tea, slavery's been supported. I know it's wrong, your majesty, but slaves in Africa worked hard in fields of sugar cane to sweeten up your char. British things, oh British, British things. things, I thought that there were many British things, oh British, British things. things, afraid there's hardly any. You know your British cotton vest, what's wrong with it, explain. The cotton's from America and picked by slaves again. Your empire's built on fighting wars, that's how your income's swollen. Your British things are from abroad and most are frankly stolen. Whatever next? Go on, pray tell. Our British Queen is foreign as well. It's true, I am of foreign descent. And your husband, Albert? A German gent. At least I've got a British name. Victoria's Latin. That's a shame! British, British things, things, British things. things. There are none we declare. All our favourite British things seem to come from elsewhere. More sugar. I am against mass migration back to Africa and for reparations because our four parents, the blood of our four parents, blood and tears and sweat and everything built the is the foundation of the wealth of Europe and North America and the Caribbean. So to suggest that we move back to Africa and to leave 
the foundation that our four parents built and what we have helped to build, uh, I, I, I am totally against that. Uh, even if we are going to sell what we have still to leave the foundation and leave it to, uh, to what uh, leave it to what the other races no no way we hold on to what we have here and build something uh, with businesses and build on what we can have in in these countries in the diaspora and also have something in Africa just like the other races um, have stuff all over the the world we can have things uh, especially in Africa in Africa and in the countries where we we live we are the countries of Africa Second largest continent right after Asia We are the countries of Africa There are 54 countries presently that we will teach ya My name's Mali, my capital band, my goal's really hot I'm Mauritania, my capital is now a shot My name's Mauritius, my capital's Port Louis, how's that? I am Morocco, my capital's name is Rabat Mozambique is my name, my capital is Maputo I am Namibia, when hooks my capital Niger is my name, my capital is Nyame I am Nigeria, my capital's Abuja, here to stay I'm Rwanda, it's me, my capital is Kigali I'm Tome and Principe, my capital's Tome. Senegal's my name The next segment starts with the Commander-in-Chief of the EFF, the Economic Freedom Front of South Africa, uh, Julius Malema, Commander-in-Chief. And both the, his position and the name of that organization is very important. Uh, economic Freedom Front. They are the the opposition. His party, the EFF, is the opposition party in Parliament, and have been very instrumental in fighting corruption. They were the main force to get rid of Zuma, and now they are. Uh, fighting against Ramaphosa to the extent that uh, I think last week they were were forced out of the the parliament by the security forces because of course the ANC has been bought out uh, by the rich white people in South Africa so that the the uh, economic enslavement continues economic apartheid uh, continues in in South Africa and the EFF under its commander in chief Julius Malema who was the leader he was the leader of the ANC before he broke away from the ANC where because of the it's because it was bought out by the white rich white people in South Africa, he broke away and formed his own organization. Correction, Brother Malema was the head of the ANC Youth Wing, not the entire ANC, before he broke away and formed the EFF, the Economic Freedom Front. Zuma was given the country away to a Indian family that moved to live in South Africa and he was giving them all kinds of contracts and getting kickbacks from them and he's now in prison because of, of, of that corruption. 
Ramaphosa recently, last year, 2022, uh, hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars was found at a, a, a building, was stolen from a building at a, a farm that he owns. So he again is involved in corruption. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your contacts. Thank you. One day not long ago, Rio resident Tatiana Ribera noticed this little outdoor food court and decided she just had to eat at the chicken stand. I was passing by an ônibus and despertou interest in the cabelo dela que é muito grande. Me atrai até de ouvir as histórias das pessoas que têm um cabelo parecido sobre as coisas que ela passa. Call it hair solidarity, but something bigger is at play here. Thaisa Fineira, the owner of the chicken truck, is at the heart of an Afro-Brazilian movement for black-to-black -black businesses. That is, black Brazilians producing stuff, then selling it to other blacks. Ribeira, who is Afro-Brazilian herself, says she's since learned about black-to-black -black and is now a happy regular here. Quase não se tem empreendedores negros. Quase não se tem negros em áreas importantes de negócios altos, de área nobre, de tudo que é impo impo importante, não tem muito de negro. Thaisa, who opened her chicken truck four years ago, is trying to change that, first in her own kitchen. Eu tenho um companheiro que é um homem preto. Eu tinha meu trabalho, minha carreira desenvolvida, e ele ainda não. A gente percebe que esse movimento para homens ainda é bem difícil. Acho que o homem ainda não está, principalmente o homem negro, que fica na linha de tiro, que é o homem de 15 a 29 anos, ainda não consegue se adequar porque ele é sempre criminalizado pelo mercado de trabalho. Thaisa recently hired Leila da Silva, 53 years old, Afro-Brazilian. Estava desempregada, fui e tive uma oferta. É, e vim parar aqui. É importante mostrar para as pessoas que os negros têm um lugar para poder trabalhar, que são importantes, sintam-se pessoas importantes também. But where Thaisa is really trying to influence society is on the customer end, getting more black Brazilians like Tatiana to stop by. But it isn't easy. Aqui é um bairro de classe média na Zona Norte, então a presença do negro ainda é pequena. Então é uma luta que a gente trava e trazer amigos que sejam pretos, eles não podem comer todo final de semana aqui, porque ainda tem dificuldade no acesso ao capital. Some 56% of Brazilians identify themselves as black, yet they are disproportionately poor. 
For many, the answer to why starts here, at Rio's port. This recently discovered pier was where Africans were first received in Brazil, as slaves. Five centuries ago, up until 1888, they remained the property of whites. As atrocious as that history is, black entrepreneur Giovanni Harvey says some people use it to simply write off blacks today, which is wrong. Muitas vezes as pessoas associam essa dificuldade a uma herança da escravidão. Estabelecem uma relação mecânica entre a pobreza da população negra e o fato da população negra ser descendente de escravos. Isso não é verdade. A pobreza da população negra está ligada ao racismo, que o racismo é que perpetuou uma relação de desigualdade que se originou na relação da escravidão. Especially structural racism, Harvey says. Harvey is a successful black businessman. He helped start the Black to Black movement, incubating hundreds of black startups in recent years. E eu percebia que as pessoas não 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 conseguiam desenvolver negócios não é porque elas não tinham competência. É porque não tinham oportunidade, porque não tinham acesso à informação. Black Brazilians, Arve says, have traditionally passed by what black businesses there are, shopping instead in white-owned establishments. But all that's changing. More and more Afro-Brazilians are finding each other and their businesses online. A postgraduate student named Eduardo is in Rio for a little research. He's renting a room in this apartment an apartment he found on a website called diaspora.black. Eu achei muito interessante a iniciativa com o meu trabalho com com sempre com questões étnicas, sempre da, da questão da negritude no no Brasil. Eu encontrei isso no, no site de uma amiga. So this is both a way for you to have a roof over your head and also a way to gain further insight into your area of expertise. Sim, porque eu achei uma iniciativa brilhante assim. Diaspora.black is an online rental portal, like an Airbnb for dark-skinned Brazilians. These five guys started it. They're still in the beta stage, but they've got hundreds of people using the site, in Brazil and in several countries, including the US. What brought them together? Racism, they say, when traveling themselves or hosting, says Carlos Humberto. I vivi algumas experiências num outro site que eu é, usava, né? o Airbnb, onde eu locava meu, meu imóvel, de pessoas que chegaram na minha casa, meu perfil não tinha foto, então quando a pessoa chegou na minha casa para que me viu, eles se sentiram muito, eles ficaram visivelmente muito incomodados, assustados, e eu fui comprar umas frutas, umas flores para eles ficarem em casa, e quando eu retornei, eles tinham ido embora e disseram que não era bem o que eles esperavam. Na verdade, quem eles esperavam não era Eu, né? Eles não esperavam que a pessoa que fosse acomodá-los fosse uma pessoa negra. So while these guys support the ongoing struggle to eradicate racism through education, public policy changes, and so on, their project pulls an end around. If you can't accept us, it's telling white society, we'll move on without you and prosper. burn this racist hotel down. Hey, me just have a question. Now watch me here. I cut off my lock so I try to navigate through this shot here thing. 
How how Chinese man go come at Jamaica? I build hotel and say black people can't come there. That's why them bunny down. Me no can do violence, but Jamaicans, anytime them come at Jamaica with this foolishness, we, we, we need to burn down everything. Because they want to turn Jamaica into a new America, in a new UK, in a new China, in a new Western world, where, where white man and Chinese man and everybody except melanated people are run shit. Anytime they come to Jamaica with this bullshit, we need to stand firm. Don't sit down and take it, Jamaicans. You hear me? Don't sit down and take it because if we allow them to do this, first they must start with the hotels, then they must start with the big, the big um, industrial sectors, and then they must start talking about say we can't go there, so we can't. You can't tell we what we do in Africa country. Jamaica, we ban and go. You're a visitor. You hear that? You're a visitor. And no matter how the politician them hype no up and tell us and no can't do this and no can't do that. Guess what? We have something called community just this. And if we no peace we have enough, we are gonna react. We're not like sorry, we not bash Americans or whatever, but we're not like Americans where we are gonna just complain, complain. We with black road, we burn tire and we we cast we cast problem. Here? Don't come to Jamaica, can't tell we about black people can't use use free we free we God given rights in a free country. Can't use hotel, can't use beach, can't use what what next? Can't use hospital. You are gonna have special hospital just for black people now. Come on man. Why I need some herb in my brain So bring the medication for my 